Hey folks, hope y'all doing well. I'm just popping on doing a quick video on today. I'm gonna be talking about various topics um, that's on my heart to speak on. I just finished reading Colossians 3, just going over scripture and um, it came across to, to speak on, um, you know, seeking above and not beneath. So that means to seek heavenly things, to seek the Lord, to seek um, his guidance and what he has taught his children and to not depend upon earthly treasures to not depend upon temporary things that are here on this earth and so this is a nation we live in a generation that says i don't need god i was a part of that i was a part of the new age thing where i was just like you know what i'm gonna do me i don't need a god i used to believe in god but to a small extent to where I didn't want to obey him. So believing comes with obedience. So I can't really say that I believed in God. I, I knew of the Lord, but I didn't totally surrender my life and believe on his word. Because if I did, I would obey him. I would believe what he says is true and his holy word. So, you know, a dangerous thing was happening now is a generation that is forgetting about the Lord. It forgets God. And the Bible warns us of that. It says, and I uh, believe in Psalms, it says, a nation that forgets God turns into hell. And so that means that here come chaos. That's an open door for chaos. When we start looking towards other things, other religions, when we turn towards ourselves, even people worship themselves. I used to worship myself because I would, you know, seek those vibes and be like, oh, I'm so powerful. I used to call myself a goddess. I did all those things because I wanted to be in control. I thought I had control over my soul. I thought I had control over my whole being. I was totally wrong until the Lord bought me off my high horse and chastised me, okay? I was chastised sorely by going to hell. So that was my wake up call. That is how my testimony began, y'all. Some people get chastised by the Lord in different ways, through a vision, through a dream, through dying, going to hell, through going to heaven, through just seeing um, demons and all kinds of different things, angels or whatnot. But my story was I went to hell. And and I was I considered myself a good person. I didn't bother nobody. I didn't get in trouble with the law. I, I thought I was good to go because I was so positive and I, I, I like to reach higher vibes and you know, I, I lit up incense and I had candles around me. I built an altar and I, I wasn't hurting nobody, I didn't think. But I forgot about God. I started worshiping myself. I welcomed in familiar spirits in my life. My life went downhill from there until the Lord took me off my high horse and showed me that hell was my destination if I did not change. If I died in my, if I died in my sins, I would be placed in hell. And that's not a wake up call. That would be just a reality. That would be the end. But the Lord was so generous, was so merciful towards me that he allowed me to get dragged down to hell. He could have drove me out of here altogether because I used to say some terrible things, like blasphemous things, like, oh, there's no God. There's you know, if, if it was a God, a doo, doo doo and coming up with all kind of different situations and, uh, and just false accusations about God, just so I could try to magnify myself, make myself feel better. Jesus is real, y'all. He proved, he proved himself to me. He showed me the hard way. Okay. He showed me the hard way and excuse me. And he's so real. You know, I couldn't refuse after that, you know, after these experiences, after my encounter with the Lord, too. So it wasn't just all hell. I had an encounter here in Angel Sing, had an encounter with Jesus in my room, at my doorpost, and that's biblical. I didn't see, like I said, I didn't see his face. I just saw his uh, midriff on down, his robe trembling, shaking. I would never forget. So the Lord has been showing me things to where I cannot refuse that I couldn't even articulate those words to be like, God is not, I can't even articulate it. You know what I'm saying? I can't even think upon such things. Even during, you know, challenging times that I'm going through, the Lord is still on my side. 
He's so faithful, y'all. He's so rich. And it breaks my heart when people uh, decide to refuse the Lord. When they refuse him, when they when they want to shun him out, they hear t they hear of these wonderful testimonies, and there's thousands of them. There's thousands of or millions, probably even millions, y'all, of testimonies. The Lord is waking up folks like me, because I I used to think I didn't need God, that I could do it on my own, that I you know I'm, I'm a soul survivor, that I could do everything. I, I was in complete chaos in my mind. My mind was. It was off. The devil works on your mind. He takes control. And it, it just goes downhill from there. So I'm just thankful for God's grace, his love and kind and mercy. And um, to encourage somebody out there, never stop sharing your testimony. Never be ashamed of your testimony. Don't even be ashamed of where you are now with your walk with God. Because we all have to be somewhere. We all have to start somewhere. We all mature and grow. The Bible says we go from glory to glory to glory. So that means that we keep evolving in the Lord. We get renewed in the Lord daily. So we mature in him. When we seek him, when we cry out to him, he knows our hearts. He knows that we're honest about and we're serious about our walk with him. God will not fail you. He will not fail you. He will not refuse you. He will be with you. The Bible says he will be with you in deep waters. So it doesn't matter what you're going through, what season you're in with the Lord. Never be ashamed of your testimony of where you are. Cry out to the Lord. He will help you. He will restore you. He knows exactly what you've been through. He knows why you've been through it. But the devil, he wants to magnify a situation to make it seem as if there is no God. That God caused these problems. God wants to see you in torment and pain. That's what the devil wants you to think. And that's a lie from the pit of hell. God wants the opposite. God wants you to live an abundant life. God has a future for you. It's all in his word. He demonstrates that in the life of believers who have taken the time out to read his word, to pray, to cry out to him. You know, this it's not easy. You know what I mean? I used to hear about people saying that Christianity is easy. You know, Christians are lazy and it's easy to be a Christian. If it's so easy, why aren't you doing it? A lot of people, uh, 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 you know, they get choked up on that because they know that it's not easy to live a disciplined life. To surrender your life into Jesus Christ. There's nothing easy about that. The Bible says we are to mortify our members. To flee from fornication. All uncleanness, unrighteousness. That's what it says. But we can only do that through Jesus Christ. There's nothing easy about mortifying your, your uh, flesh. Mortify means to deaden. To deaden that stuff. Okay. So there's nothing easy about this life of living for Jesus. But Jesus gives the strength through all situations in our life and so i'm here to let somebody know that you know never be ashamed to get testimony share it you know we all go through different seasons and times you know in our life where we really um are unsure about things but that's where we read god's word so the enemy doesn't get into our minds and start lying to us to try to make us feel like we're alone and that's the job of the enemy to always get you isolated, to get you to not share your testimony, to get you to be ashamed of your testimony or whatever season you're in with your walk with Christ. That's his goal, to get you alone, to get you to feel like I can't speak up, I, I feel ashamed, I feel embarrassed. But God wants different the, a difference for you. God has something better for you. He wants you to fellowship with others. Okay, he wants us to pray for one another to edify one another, okay, to strengthen one another, to hold each other accountable, to help us walk this walk with Christ. You know, it's a marathon, you know, we got, it's a marathon. It's not something we're going to just rush through. We're going to, we're going to go over all kind of ups and downs in our life. But, but God, like I said, he's always faithful. He's always so faithful and true in every situation that we go through, y'all. And I, I'm a living witness and a testimony of how God is with us even through the deep waters, the challenges. Because at that time, that shows us who we really are because it's easy to be happy, to be playful, to be laughing and dancing and stuff when everything is all good, when there's no problems. But how, are we, how do we respond during challenging circumstances? I'm going through one right now. I just lost my Chi Chi Mama last week. 
So I'm still grieving and hurting, but the Lord has been on my side. He's been helping me through this. He's been wiping away my tears. I've been crying out to him. He knows the grieving pain that I'm going through. He knows how my heart feels. He knows all these things about me. And I don't feel alone. That's the difference now. If I didn't know the Lord during this time, this thing would have been off the hook. It would have been off the hook, y'all. Like, it, my mind, everything would have been messed up. I would have been leaning on different substances to try to get over this situation, to try to rely and lean on things and stuff rather than the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the real help. You know, only Jesus saves. Only Jesus saves. And um, I'm so glad he didn't drive me out of here a long time ago, y'all. Like I, Like I said, I lived a life that was like, totally contrary to God and I know some people may have testimonies of course on like their walk and how they were living and going about things prior to Jesus saving them but when I tell y'all I was contrary to, to God like I did the total opposite everything I would manipulate and twist into my own understanding and you know it caused a lot of consequences like anxiety depression you know being on medication um just feeling like I didn't have a purpose and no hope in life. Jesus provides hope and he has a purpose for each and every one of you. And so, you know, I'm here to let somebody know that, you know, you call upon the name of the Lord, you will be saved. You call upon his name, you will be saved no matter where you are in your life right now, how things are going, how bad you may think you have messed it up. God sees you, he hears you, he's waiting to hear from you. He's waiting to hear from you, to cry out to him. You know, there are some things I thought I would never thought, you know, I thought it was just planted in me. I thought like, you know, this is it. This is how I am. Mm -mm. I had to cry out to the Lord. The Bible tells us, you know, to cry out to the Lord. He hears our cries, y'all. We don't have to suffer. We don't have to, to, to go through things alone. We don't have to go through things alone. And um, like I said, you know, this generation with I don't need God. The thing I didn't think about back then was, and I'm thinking about it now, is uh, who who was going to uh, deal with my sin problem? You know what I mean? I never thought about that. I just thought that I was going to go to a better place. That better place is heaven, but a lot of people don't want to say heaven. They just say better place or, you know, you can say paradise or whatever. They come up with all kinds of different names. But how am I going to make it to this better place with all this sin? There's no sin in heaven. Okay, you know, that's something I never thought about. Like, oh, you know, I don't need God. I'm just going to be good. I would never be good enough. You know what I'm saying? We saved by grace through faith, God's mercy, and his, his unconditional love towards us. And, um, yeah, that's something I, I, I thought about, you know, recently. Like, I, lit, I was talking all that talk, but I never thought about who was going to deal with my sin problem. If I, if I was, if I planned to make it to a better place, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, I thank God on today, y'all, for um, just just being just being there. He, he's faithful. He's so faithful. And um, like I said, it breaks my heart when people reject Jesus Christ, when they reject the gospel, you know, especially, like I said, you hearing it from the mouths of folks who lived a lifestyle that was contrary to the Lord. You know what I mean? Like, this is serious, you know? Life, life. Is, the Bible says life is like a vapor. We you know one day we're here, one day we're not. So like I said, I thank God for not driving me out of here while I was in my sins. You know, that's, that's a serious thing I, I always think about and that always humbles me to think upon how the Lord delivered me how he showed me things how he allowed me to go through some spiritual circumstances in order for me to understand that i do need him at the end of the day i do need him it ain't about how good i am or, or articulate i am how talented how how uh you know how many people like me or it's not anything about that you know it's about giving thanks to the creator the lord jesus christ honoring him he created all this the bible says that everything uh exists because of him it exists because of him this is god this is his place he built this for us so i just thank him on today um 
for giving me a second chance at life that like i said that always humbles me that that always just makes me think of how blessed i am because of jesus and his his grace and his mercy towards me and um thank you if you've been praying for me i thank you and i love you guys and i hope you guys have a blessed and wonderful week